afternoon. It is such a pleasure and a delight to have you with us and tuning in to the broadcast today. I know there are several on the uh, phone call conference line as well. Wednesday, our Wednesday Bible study, our first Bible study in the month of May. We're delighted to have you here with us today. Let's start our service in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness. Father, we thank you for the many blessings. Lord, we thank you for the blessings of the sunshine and beautiful weather outside today. Lord, we thank you for the blessings of your grace and of your goodness. Father, we come before you today. We pray, Lord, we lift up our president. We pray, Lord, for our vice president. Lord, we pray for, Lord, uh, the presidential cabinet and, Lord, our leaders in Washington. Father, we pray for our leaders here in Michigan and, Father, all the way down to our local level. We pray, oh God, for wisdom. We pray, Lord, for prudence. We pray, oh God, that you would give our leaders, Lord, discretion and guide them in the way. Father, we know that the hand of the king rests in the heart of the Lord. And so, Father, we pray and we petition you, dear Lord, that you would please, O oh God, work and move upon our leaders' hearts, give them the wisdom they need for this hour. We pray, Lord, that they would rightly lead, Father, both our nation and our state and our cities and our local areas. Father, we pray, Lord, that uh, we would begin to move this country forward, Lord, prudently, safely, and responsibly, Lord. But we pray, O oh God, that there would be an opening and a loosening and, a, a Lord, a refreshing. We pray, dear Lord, that church doors would be opened again and businesses would be opened again. We pray, O oh God, for your help, dear Lord, in all these things. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. And amen. I'm going to invite you today uh, to turn two places in your Bible. First, we want to turn to the book of Esther, Old Testament book of Esther. If you open your Bible to the book of Psalms, that's right in the middle of your Bible. If you go back to the left uh, a little bit, you'll get to uh, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, then Job, then Psalms. And uh, so it's just before the book of Psalms. We're in Esther chapter 1 and verse 1. Then secondly, I'd like to invite you to turn to Philippians, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. That's our scripture of the month Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 and the scripture of the month is rejoice in the Lord alway and again I say rejoice it's a wonderful scripture to memorize I want to invite you we have started as a church reading through the book of Psalms start now if you didn't start on Monday then look they're real short right now until you get to the middle of the book and you get to the hit Psalm 119 um, uh, you've got some time to make up but I encourage you whenever you listen to this message whenever you happen to be tuning in start reading the book of Psalms the Psalms will encourage you they'll strengthen you you'll draw you closer to the Lord and it will do a wonderful things for your faith you'll see other people of faith go through good times and bad times hard times and they do wonderful things to remember the Lord so I want to encourage you in that fashion uh, this is Mother's Day coming up uh, this coming Sunday as you, if you're watching this broadcast live or in uh, real time uh, the, it's Mother's Day coming up so for all of uh, you that have mothers that are still alive make sure you plan and prepare now plan to call your mother uh, visit your mother send her a card send her something and be a blessing to her I want to encourage you we have a very special services coming up on Sunday the 17th of May that's going to be our spring revival it coincides with the 62nd anniversary of Rose Park Baptist Church. Uh, we've been around for 62 wonderful years serving the Lord and uh, we have had scheduled uh, evangelist Scott Pauley. Uh, he was supposed to be here with us. He's not going to be able to be here with us physically uh, but he is pre-recording two messages and those will both be pre-recorded uh, and pre-posted on that day uh, both on our Facebook channel and YouTube channel. And uh, those will be a blessing. Brother Paulie, I know, will be a blessing, a help, and encouragement to you. I want to encourage you to invite others. Uh, do a watch party. Invite other people to watch with you. Share those links. We're going to be putting things out in this next week uh, that will help you to prepare folks for that. And uh, some information, some advertising, even a uh, short promotional video from Brother Paulie himself. And those will be a blessing. And so please pray that God would use that. Amen. Uh, folks need prayer. Folks need encouragement. Folks need uh, help from the Lord right now. So we want to really be in prayer about that. Well, now we're also, uh, we're starting a brand new Bible study uh, uh, in our midweek services. Uh, it'll be a Bible study through the book of Esther. Now I made this announcement um, 
or let our church folks know. Uh, but if you would like the notes, I do. I will be emailing out the lesson notes uh, ahead of time. Normally, when we have normal Bible services, Bible studies, I do a fill-in-the-blank follow-along for uh, several of our teaching services. But we're going to make those available to you for free. You can, uh, if you'll call the church office or email me, uh, contact us. We will email you out the church notes ahead of time, usually on Tuesday or Wednesday morning. You can get them and then print them out and follow along. They'll not be fill-in-the-blank. All the information will be there. Uh, we do have some certain things highlighted, but that helps. A lot of folks like to take notes and, uh, and study along with those. But today, as a way of introduction, this is going to be an introduction to the book of Esther. Some books are very familiar. Some books are less familiar. Uh, and the book of Esther is kind of halfway in between. Uh, we all know a little bit about Esther, but maybe not as much as we should. So today we're going to uh, take time to introduce the book and then next week, we're going to jump right into Esther chapter 1 and look at the events in the book and begin to learn and grow and be challenged in our faith. I want to point out, we're going to read one verse by way of introduction here in Esther chapter 1 and verse 1 and then get right into our Bible lesson. And the Bible says this, Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, uh, that, is, that is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even uh, unto Ethiopia, over an hundred and seven and twenty providences. Uh, and then the Bible goes on to describe the situation and the setting that leads into the book of Esther that sets up uh, the order of events that are in. Uh, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer yet one more time. You can never pray too much and ask God to bless this specific Bible lesson. Father, we thank you so much uh, for the Bible. Lord, it's a precious gift from heaven. We thank you, Lord, for its truths. We thank you for its comfort, its grace, its direction. Father, we're praying and we're asking, dear Lord, that you would help us. Lord, you challenge us to grow and in, in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, you challenge us as believers to rightly divide the word of truth. Lord, you challenge us to study to be a workman that's not ashamed. Lord, we seek and to set aside a few minutes during this time, God, so that we may uh, search the scriptures Lord, so that we could be better for you. Lord, we could know you better. And Lord, we could be better for you. Lord, help us, we pray in Jesus' name. And amen. Now we're going to jump right in here. And, uh, but number one, an introduction to the book of Esther. Um, the, uh, the book of Esther is a wonderful book. And it amazingly displays the providence of God. Now the providence of God, someone described the providence of God as the, as the hand of God in the glove of history. Sometimes you can't see God. Sometimes uh, God does come, and like on Mount Sinai, and you see the smoke and the fire and the pillar. Sometimes God is very present and very powerful and very evident, but sometimes he's not. In the book of Deuteronomy, the Bible says that there are times that God will hide his face. But yet even when God hides his face, yet God's hand is still very present working with, through what's called providence. And I think it's a great way to describe it that God has his hand in the glove of history and the glove of world events and God is working through world events and ordering through situations and circumstances to demonstrate his providence, his watch care. Now, in the book of Esther, God raises up a young Jewish girl uh, out of the ruins of captivity and obscurity to become the queen of the world-dominating Persian Empire. Uh, as we pick up here, this is what we would call a captivity book. Now, most of us are familiar with uh, pre-captivity and post-captivity or pre-exile and post-exile. But this book is kind of like in the book of uh, Daniel, uh, in, in the book of Ezra, Nehemiah, and we have Esther here right in the same time. Now, these books happen during the captivity. In fact, Esther is at the end of the captivity. But in the book of Esther, there is a, Jew, a young Jewish girl. Her family, like a lot of other families, got swept up in the invasion of King Nebuchadnezzar. You remember those stories and how Nebuchadnezzar took all of the Jewish people over into the land of Babylon. Well, the Babylonian kingdom eventually got conquered by the Persian kingdom and they got over, overrun, just like God outlaid it in the book of Daniel. 
And so now we're into not the Babylonian kingdom, but the Persian kingdom. And in the Persian kingdom, we see there's a series of events. And there's this young girl. She's an orphan girl. Uh, She's a captive girl. And yet God takes this young Jewish uh, orphan girl out of obscurity and plucks her out and raises her up to be the queen of the most powerful nation in the world. That's a wonderful example of God's providence. Uh, In doing so... God, through his providence, saves not only his people, but he saves them from destruction, and he exalts them in a foreign land. God took this group of small um, uh, captives who were uh, very unique, very different. In fact, throughout the exile books, you notice that they're identified as being a different people, a diverse people, people that really stood out as being having different laws and different practices and different ways. And I think that's a good example of how God's people ought to be. You see, the Jewish people had been taken into captivity. They got assimilated into the world. But even while they were in the world and they were working and living and having homes and families and all that, yet people could say, you know, there's something different about those folks. They believe different. They live different. They act different. Well, they should be different. They're God's people. And so uh, God, in, 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 in God reaching down and in picking this young girl, Esther, out of obscurity and captivity, raising her up to prominence, God displays his prominence, his providence, and God saves his entire people from destruction. Now, so that's a little bit about, you say, that's what the book of Esther is all about it's kind of in a nutshell now let me give you a little bit of background and setting I think it's very good uh, when uh, you're going to study a book of the Bible that you have some idea of where it fits and how it fits Uh, Esther is the inspired record of the events and the fate uh, of the large number of Jewish people who chose to remain in captivity Now we'll back up a little bit. Uh, You remember at the end uh, of Jewish history, the kings, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar came in, he took everybody captive, brought them in. That's the time of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then now we're after the life of Daniel and that 70 years had expired. God said he'd raise up a king by the name of Cyrus. Cyrus was raised up by God and, and Cyrus said, go home. Go back to the land of Israel, rebuild the temple, resettle Israel, build houses, build places, worship God, serve God. And a very small fraction of Jewish people said, that sounds like a great idea. They said, we're going to pack up. We're going to make the six-month journey on foot. Uh, We're going to go back. We're going to face destruction, opposition, poverty, hardships. But they said, it's for God, and we're going to do it. But you know what? That was just a very small fraction of the Jewish people. Uh, The large majority of the Jewish people said, you know what? We have it really good. Uh, We came over here and yeah, you know, they think of their their grandpa and their grandma who who were taken in the captivity. They they suffered. But you know, they settled down and then mom and dad started businesses and we, we bought houses and we've got land and now by the third generation or fourth generation, they became, become businessmen. They become business owners. They, they become landowners. Um, in the book, you'll see that some of them are serving in the court of the king. And they've become to occupy high positions of authority. And they're like, you know what? We got it pretty good here. And they said, you know what? You all go back. We're just going to stay right here. We'll send you a love offering and we'll pray for you all. And so the book of Esther is a... Um, is an account of what happened to those people as you turn past the book of Esther God leaves them behind and really never mentions them again the focus of of the rest of the Bible turns back to the people that God did obey God and people that did return to the land and so now the books of Ezra Nehemiah Haggai and Zechariah they record the events of what happened to the small group of people who did go back into the land of Israel but the book of Ezra records what happened to the people that stayed in the land Um, and God had sent the people back to the land of Israel uh, to rebuild the temple and to resettle now it's interesting if you hold something here uh, hold your hand here at Esther chapter 1 go back with me to the book of Ezra Ezra is the first of what we call the, uh, uh, the the I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Um, Ezra chapter, I'll just get back in the notes. Ezra chapter 6 and 7. Now, the events of the book of Esther happen in between Ezra chapter 6 
and Ezra chapter 7. If you, have a, if you have a habit of making notes in your Bible, you could make a little note there, and uh, you could uh, put down there in the book of Esther, or write down Esther. Now, the book of Ezra is broken into two parts, chapters 1 through chapter 6, and all of that happens uh, prior to the life of Esther. Esther, the entire events of the book of Esther, happen right here in between uh, Ezra 6 and 7. And had it not been for Esther, there would have been no Ezra chapter 7. By the way, when you pick up in Ezra 7, you get into the actual life and ministry of Ezra the life and ministry of Nehemiah, and then on to the rest of the Old Testament like Haggai and Zechariah and Malachi. Now listen, had there been no Esther, there would have been no Ezra. He would have been killed. Had there been no Esther, there would have been no Nehemiah. He would have been killed. Had there been no Esther, not only would there have been no Ezra or Nehemiah or Zechariah or Malachi, now listen, there would have been no Jesus. So you may be asking yourself, well, how important is it that we take time to study one little book about a lady in the Old Testament who's a Persian living over on the other side of the world. Well, if there was no Esther, there would have been no Jesus because God used Esther in a mighty way to help her people. Now, listen, that's a great important thing for you to know today. Now listen, you may be saying, look, God, yes, I understand God knows my name. Yes, I understand uh, God loves me, but I'm not important. I'm nobody. I'm insignificant. Nobody knows my name. Nobody knows anything about me. Can I just say to you, friend, you are very important to God's plan. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life and your existence. And may I say, if there is no you, there's a lot of ramifications. God has a plan for your life. And so that's a little bit about the background of the book of Esther now there's some unique facts about the book of Esther I'd like to share by way of just by way of introduction the book of Esther is one of only two books in the Bible that's named after a lady that's named after a lady of course you might already know that the second book is the book of Ruth both of them in the Old Testament now some would argue that the uh, epistle of the second epistle of John uh, was uh, was to uh, was was written to a lady but it's not does not bear the name of the lady it's one of only two books in the Bible that bear the name of a lady there's some interesting comparisons between Ruth and Esther Ruth uh, is a or, or was a Gentile who moved into Israel and she married a Jewish man. She became the mother of a king, King David. It's interesting. So you have a Gentile who moves into the land of Israel, marries a Jewish man. God uses her to uh, be the a maternal grandmother to a, queen, or a, a great-great-grandmother to a king. And then you have the story of Esther. Now, Esther is the exact opposite story. Esther is a Jewish lady who is moved to a Gentile land who God, in and through his providence, marries a king, and she bears the kings and queens of the land of Persia. How interesting that is. Two ladies separated by time and distance, yet God uses them in such great ways. So there's a second interesting fact. Number one, uh, that the book of Esther is one of only two books that bears the name of a lady. Number two, Esther is one of only two other books in the entire Bible that never names the name of God. You can look from Esther chapter 1. There are 10 chapters in the book of Esther. And you will never find the name of God in the book of Esther. You will never find them ever going to church or synagogue in the book of Esther. No one, uh, uh, the, the word prayer is never mentioned in the book of Esther. There is never a mention of the scriptures in the book of Esther. It's very, very interesting. But the book of Esther is one of only two books in which the name of God is never named in any way. The only other book that records that uh, is the book of the Song of Solomon. That's interesting. You think about that. But yet, although we don't see the name of God, we certainly see three things in this book. Number one, we see God's hand of leading. We see God's hand of leading. We see God leading not only Esther and her family, but we see God leading the Persian nation. You say, now the Persian nation, if you were to look back, this would be, uh, uh, in our mind, we say Persia. We don't have much reference to that. But if I would say Iran, all right? The modern day country of Iran is the ancient country or area of Persia. 
And so maybe if I say the name of Iran, you say, oh, I understand it's in the Middle East and I understand a little bit about the, uh, the situation and the background and the people. And so the Persian people of old are the Iranian people of the new. Uh, it's the same area and the same people. And uh, you say, now, can God guide and direct the Persian people or the Iranian people? Yes, God can. God only direct, not only directed a, a Jewish young girl, a, a godly young family, God directed the orders and the events, and may I say, even the king of the Persian nation. We see God's hand of leading, number one. Number two, we see God's hand of providing. We see God's hand of providing. All the way through the book of Esther, as God displays his providence, we see God providing each and every step of the way. And the third thing we see in the book of Esther, even though we don't see God's name, we see God's hand of leading, we see God's hand of providing, we also see God's hand of protecting. We see so many times and in so many situations how things could have gone wrong and how things could have turned out very differently, but yet we see God's hand of protection. It's a wonderful thing as we see in, the, uh, in this book. Now, turn with me to the book of Esther. Uh, if, in the book of Esther, turn with me in the book of Esther to Esther chapter 8 and verse 9. Esther chapter 8 and verse 9. I want to show, point something out to you that's very interesting. We're looking at some of the unique things about the book of Esther. Number one, it's one of only two books named after a woman. Number two, it's one of the only two books in the Bible that never mentions the name of God. But the book of Esther also has two very interesting verses in its pages. In Esther chapter 8 and verse 9, you have the longest verse in the entire Bible. If you count up the number of letters and the number of words, there is no verse in the entire Bible that is longer than Ezra chapter 8 and verse 9. Let's read the longest verse in the Bible. Then were the king's scribes called at that time in the third month, that is the month Sivan, on the three and twentieth day thereof, as it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews and to the lieutenants and to the deputies and rulers of the providence that are from India unto Ethiopia and 120 and seven providences unto every province according to the writing thereof unto every people after their language and to the Jews according to the writing and according to their language. So if you want to memorize the longest verse in the Bible, you would memorize as Esther chapter 8 and verse 9. Now there's also a second uh, uh, verse in the, the book of Esther that's very, not very familiar and very famous. Turn with me to Esther chapter 4 and verse 14. If you were to mention the phrase to almost everyone who's been around the things of God for any length of time, and if you were to mention the phrase for such a time as this, instantly people would go, ah, I've heard that phrase. I know that phrase. In fact, they're like, I know that's a Bible phrase and it's in the Bible, but they may not know where it is. Uh, they may not know why it is and they may not know what it is. Well, that phrase for such a time as this is in the book of Esther and it was actually spoken to Esther from Mordecai. Look at Esther chapter four and verse 14, the most famous verse uh, recorded, of course, in the book of Esther. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? You notice it was a question there. And this was Mordecai saying, you know, Esther, maybe, just maybe, God has put you in exactly the right place at the right time to do the right thing. My friends, that's a very important truth that we glean from the book of Esther. We'll talk about it more when we get to chapter 4. But my friends, can I say God makes no mistakes? God has placed you in the family that he has placed you by his providence. God has put you in the, in the, in the, uh, in the town, in the city, in the job, in the situation, and in the circumstance by no accident. My friends, God's providential hand has brought you through the course of your life and has brought you into the situation you are in for such a time as this. My friend, God has a specific plan for your life it's an important plan. It's a wonderful plan. 
It's a specific plan, and God has brought you for such a time as this. Now listen, I just want to speak to all the moms that are out there today. You got all the little kids around you. You're trying to do school. You're trying to be a mom. You're trying to be a wife. You're trying to figure this out. You're trying to be a school teacher and a principal and all of that. And you're thinking, why me? <laughs> I'm thinking about the, maybe the single dad that's trying to go through that very same thing and families that are struggling right now just to figure out uh, how to get through this and uh, all these new pressures and all of these new circumstances. I'm thinking of the people whose jobs have uh, flipped around and I'm thinking of people that are struggling with different situations uh, right now. Can I say God makes no mistakes? Let me, let me speak very directly to our uh, teenagers and to our young people out there today. And you're thinking, why do I have to be stuck at home? Uh, why do I have to be homeschooled? Why, why can't I just be, why like, like all the other kids and it went to school and just normally. And uh, why do I not get a graduation? And all those questions. Can I say God makes no mistakes? And God has raised you up and God has put you in the place he has. And God has put you in this time for such a time as this. And God knew you would be there. And God knew the plan he has for you. My friend, what I wanted to just say, stop whining and just stop ask, start asking. Stop whining and just start asking. Say, God, what do you want from me? God, what's your plan? God, how do you want me to, to behave? And God, how do you want me to act? And God, what do you want me to do? God, whatever you do, I, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. Stop whining and start asking. And so that's the most famous uh, verse in all of us. Now let's go back to Esther chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh, we're going to wrap this up here uh, in our introduction to the book of Esther. So we've looked at about what is the book about. God reaches down, takes this little orphan Jewish girl, raises her up from obscurity, makes her the queen of Persia, saves her entire people. God uses her greatly. Uh, the book is found in that uh, weird time of exile where the Jews were taken out of the land of Israel giving you some idea of where it is in your Bible. It's at the very end of Chronicles. Uh, it is uh, in the second half of Ez Ezra and Nehemiah, also uh, around the same time as Haggai and Zechariah, if you want to read other books. So it gave you some ideas about uh, the book itself. It pointed out some unique things in the book. Now, the last thing I want to do here as we introduce the book uh, is to give you some idea of the main characters the main characters now the first one of course would be Esther Esther is the namesake of the book it's the main person in the book now she's a Jew, uh, orphan Jewish girl as we've said but and she becomes the queen now it's interesting the name Esther is her Persian name much like uh, Daniel was Daniel's Hebrew name but when he got there they called him Belteshazzar Esther's uh, Hebrew name was Hadassah Hadassah. That was her Hebrew name, but of course she was living in a Persian land. They called her by a Persian name, and her Persian name is actually Esther. Now the second main character of the book, uh, it'll turn to Esther chapter 2. Esther chapter 2, look at verses 5 through 7. Now in Shushan, the palace, uh, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jer, the son of Shimei, the son of Kis, a Benjamite who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity, that had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. Look at verse 7. And he brought up Hadassah, that, okay, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter." And so the second main character as we study through the book of Esther is Mordecai. This would have been Esther's older cousin. And the older cousin of Esther uh, was probably a grown man. And when uh, Esther's parents died, he took her and he adopted her and he raised her as his own daughter. And Mordecai figures very prominently as we go through this study. Now, uh, of course, now the, probably the most uh, famous person of the book other than Esther is the king if you go back to Esther chapter 1 and verse 1 now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus now there's a lot of different pronunciations of that now uh, it's interesting if you study or if you do a search on his name his name pops up a lot but his, uh, his title the king appears some 125 times or over 120 times in 10 chapters uh, the word or the title king 
uh, uh, pops up in this book. And so Ahasuerus, or Ahasuerus is uh, his name, uh, is very prominent in the book. He's the Persian king. Uh, he was the son of Darius the Great. Uh, if you know your history, you've heard about the Battle of Marathon. The Battle of Marathon, the Persians uh, 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 sailed across the Mediterranean Sea. They wanted to invade Greece, and they beached on the, the, the um, uh, little island there, and the uh, Athenian warriors came down, and they beat them uh, on that little beachfront. And, and, and a man uh, ran uh, 26.2 miles back to the city of Marathon uh, to declare the victory. That's where we get Marathon, a Marathon. That's why it's that specific length of miles, is 26.2 miles, was because the uh, uh, Athenian soldier ran from the beach after the defeat of the Persian army. He ran back to the city of Marathon, 26.2 miles away, to deliver the good news. And people have run, been running marathons ever since well that was Darius the great and he was the father of this man Ahasuerus now Ahasuerus is actually his title just like we would call our our president we have our president is Donald Trump uh, president is not his name president is his title the name Ahasuerus uh, is his title it means venerable king and most likely this would be the king and known in secular history as Xerxes as Xerxes and sometimes you'll see his name throughout other parts of the Bible now there's a third uh, or a fourth prominent character and that's Queen Vashti look at uh, Esther chapter 1 Esther chapter 1 and verse 11 to bring Vashti or Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princes her beauty for she was fair to look on now Queen Vashti would have been the reigning queen of Persia now the king of Persia uh, Ahasuerus would have had many wives but he only had one queen and uh, we see in chapter one we'll get to that next week the events that led up uh, to uh, the deposing of her and then one last person one last person go to Esther chapter three and verse one Esther chapter three and verse one we'll look at the final main character of the book of Esther. In Esther chapter 3 and verse 1, the Bible says, And after these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, uh, and advanced him, and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. Now that's interesting, that title, the Agagite. Uh, there was a king Agag whom King Saul spared uh, in his life and in his time and uh, it was a descendant from this man uh, that, the, that, that Haman uh, raised up and so uh, they were a people group that the Israelites mostly conquered mostly vanquished and pushed out of the land of Israel but through these uh, many centuries and many years an anger a vengeance and a bitterness had been brewing in this group of people and all of a sudden this man Haman is promoted in the Persian Empire and he's given an opportunity to exact revenge on his long lost family members and we'll see how God uh, works in and through the situations regarding Haman it's interesting I'll conclude bring a clue the study through the book of Esther is a study in God's powerful providence through his watch care over his people even in times of great distress and unusual circumstances does that sound does that sound familiar today sounds like you know America is going through a lot of distress and unusual circumstances God is able may I friend listen God is able to order world events and guide even wicked ungodly leadership to accomplish his plan and his purposes that's why the book of Esther I believe is the perfect study for such a time as this let's pray heavenly father we thank you lord for this time we thank you lord for an introduction uh, to the book of Esther Father, I pray that you would please, as we uh, continue on during the next uh, few weeks and months, Lord, I pray that you would strengthen our knowledge of the Word of God. I pray, dear Lord, that you would help us grow closer to you. And Lord, I pray that you would please, dear Lord, help us to find greater confidence in you. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this. And we, Lord, we ask all of this in your uh, wonderful and blessed name. In Jesus' name we pray. 
and amen. I want to thank you for watching the broadcast today. Uh, If you've never come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you would say, I don't know if I'm on my way to heaven, would you get a hold of us at the church? You can send us an email. You can call us at the church office. We'd love to take the Bible and show you how you can know for sure uh, that you can be forgiven of your sins. Maybe you have questions about the Bible or about our church. We'd love to uh, answer those questions. Give us a call. Uh, uh, Thanks for tuning in. Until we meet again, let's keep looking unto Jesus.